Hey YouTube. The CPU is done. Um whole hunk of it. Over here is the ALU with the wires leading to the 16 bytes of RAM. The clock is right here with the program counter leading to the selector wires, similar in design but not exact to the Just Assassin's decoder. And right here is Tangled Wires. This right here is what I spent most of my time on, even though it's a very small part. It was probably 80% of all my time was designing that. You have to my pool of water. Hey, wolf. First wolf I ever saw. Hey, wolfie. Hey. Uh, here's my control room. Um, over here at the end is the tips and stuff for when I eventually release this for download. It's too buggy for that right now, but when that goes active. Here's my LU op codes. Uh, pause it if you want to read it. Um, this is my display right here. One is on the right, and it just goes up to 128. It's 8 bits. Um, instruction pointer to zero. Um, next instruction, this in writes to that RAM and increments instruction pointer by one. Um, and then my CPU main switch that runs it. So I am going to program a program that adds three plus one and displays it. So first reset instruction pointer to zero, then go to RAM address 1, because RAM address 0 is the display. So this is at RAM address 1, I put in 3, write that, and then my funky weird not standard CPU programming stuff requires me to do this. It's strange. And now I put in one. And then I select adding, which is LU function 001. Over here it corresponds to adding 001. Like that. And then because I want to display it, uh, I select RAM address 0, flux, and then I come over here and write B, B is where the answer is, to address A. A is what I just put in, or 0. So write the answer to address 0. Address 0 is display, so write answer to display. Put that in code, so now I have my program is coded. If I come over here to run CPU, it won't work because this is lit. Because this is still on. If one of the inputs is on, then the whole thing fails. So I made that fail safe to make sure it doesn't. Um, some reason, whenever I'm recording, it always gets the very last step, but it doesn't write to display. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Um, yeah, okay, I didn't change the code at all. Uh, here's my clock right here. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. I'm increasing the time that it takes for each tick for another uh, 16. So, it started out, it works in single player or non-recording, sorry. If these two I actually already added, um, so it's like a whole bunch slower. So we'll see if that's a problem. So there. Uh, now I am going back to my control room. And 
and I'm going to try running it again. Okay, reset, instruction pointer to zero, and run the CPU. Work this time, please. Okay, it's putting in one. See, the wires right here are what the RAM is going to the ALU. Now it's putting in the funky thing that I described. Now it's putting in the one. Sorry, the first one was a two. This is the one. I think whatever I programmed for three. Whatever. I can't even tell. So this is the adding code. And the zero to A, this wire right here should turn off. There, turned off. And now it should have been written to it. Please work. God dang it. Oh, yes! Yes! It works! It says four! Yes, finally, I recorded that 1,500 times, and finally it works. I'm happy. Because it always works when I'm not recording, but when I am, it decides to fail. I don't know where the dog went. Somewhere. Um, so yeah, this is my interface this is all the wires going to my control room I actually used to have wires going in here but that didn't work out um I am going I don't know if I already said this or not I'm gonna make a video that walks through every single step in how this thing works so I you'll actually be able to understand this heap of lights. Okay, so I think that's going to be the end of my video, so until next time, I'll be the same.